Now we shall see the ADSL technology in a little more detail. We'd look at its architecture and some of the components which are used to realize the ADSL technology, internet connectivity. We look at a very important device called the DSLAM and we'd also look at things called splitters. The ADSL is actually based of course on the transceiver unit which is on the operator side. Then it has a corresponding receiver unit which is another transceiver on the customer side. So these are the two modems which operate at certain frequencies. Um, then we have splitters. We'd see shortly how these splitters exactly work. Then we have the multiplexers for DSLs. Because after all, the information which is coming to um, the exchange from different modems needs to be um, consolidated, multiplexed, and demultiplexed uh, on, the, uh, on the exchange side. So we have a device called Digital Subscriber Line Access multi Multiplexer. This is a device that works on the operator side. It means the DSLAM works with corresponding um, modems on the individual user premises. Let's look at the overall architecture. We'll talk about individual hardware components accordingly. Uh, first of all, if you look at the overall um, arrangement of these devices, we have two networks, the internet represented by the IP backbone on top right. Then we have the voice telephony network, the public switch telephone network on the bottom right. Then we have the uh, devices which constitute uh, the operation as in DSLAM. So let's see what all is there. First of all, if you notice, we have the voice and internet traffic that is coming from the end users on the left hand side bottom. So the traffic is coming on the exchange side that is on the CO, the central office. Here, the splitters are used to filter out the signals which are not meant for a certain network and filter in the frequencies which are meant for that network. So the splitter here successfully use low pass mechanism to relay or transfer the voice traffic to the PSTN and use the band pass or the high pass filter to relay the frequencies which are meant for the ADSL internet connectivity. So the traffic actually internet traffic goes to the IP backbone. We see some devices, for instance, we see modems here, we see concentrators here. Now, what are these modems? After all, when the traffic is coming from the user side, it is modulated. It means that uh, at this particular modem, which is at the central office, all this traffic gets demodulated. We'll shortly look at what a concentrator is, but for now, just keep in mind that concentrator is a device that takes the traffic streams from all individual users, which is the internet traffic, and aggregates or consolidates it onto some broadband long haul multiplexing technology. So this is what concentrator does, but we would look at it in a little more detail. So the DSLAM, actually, uh, we, we looked at the operation from, in fact, the uplink side but let's look at it step by step. In the downlink, the telephone and ADSL signals are sent towards the customer premises equipment. The splitters are placed on both the sides, that is on the exchange side, that is the central office side, as well as on the user premises side. So on the user premises side, since we are looking at the downlink scenario, the uh, splitters demultiplex the telephone signals and the ADSL signals. Uh, the telephone signals are actually uh, band limited to um, uh, 4 kilohertz through a low pass filter. Um, the, the actual range is uh, around uh, 3.5 kilohertz to 3.6 kilohertz for voice, but uh, it, is, uh, uh, it, it is actually uh, put at a boundary of 4 kilohertz to have some um, uh, guard band as well. Now, having um, the splitter gives us a very inherent advantage that uh, since we have the telephone signals uh, 
transmitted in parallel to the uh, uh, ADSL signals. So we see that the um, voice transmission remains unaffected even in the presence of ADSL signals. And even if the ADSL signals are uh, unavailable, uh, because let's say there is some service outage for the internet, if the ADSL uh, frequencies fail, even then the telephone call can still be established. Now let's just quickly look at the uplink once more. Uh, the signals which are coming both from uh, the, uh, the telephone on the customer premises side and the ADSL signals, um, uh, these two um, frequencies or, or the signals are sent simultaneously. So these are actually traveling towards the central office in a multiplexed or interleaved manner. Now, the, the DSLAM receives it. Now, DSLAM again has splitters on its end as well. So it separates these ports and ADSL signals. And uh, then respective outputs are sent both to the uh, telephone um, exchange and to the internet router. Uh, now, uh, as I said, the device concentrator needs some attention as well. Uh, concentrators are meant only for the internet traffic. On the uplink side, uh, what happens is that these concentrators actually take traffic from individual user streams, that is, from all DSLAM connected internet users, and aggregates this traffic onto the backbone. The backbone could be an all IP backbone, for instance, it is uh, a router communicating to another router, or if it is, uh, let's say, it is IP over ATM technology then uh, these uh, individual uh, user streams or user data is uh, concatenated or appended and it is encapsulated into ATM format. Now, the concentrator does exactly the reverse of it on the downlink side. Now, the traffic is separated for the individual uh, ADSL modems uh, by uh, by the concentrator. Now the concentrator is concentrator on one end and it is a digital splitter, if you may like to call it that way. Uh, it is like a digital splitter that splits individual internet streams to their respective uh, um, uh, ADSL modems. Um, uh, now this is the job of the concentrator, both from the uplink and downlink perspective. 